you couldn't ask for a better day weather-wise. And look at this beautiful landscape behind us. So um, couldn't ask for more. And we're certainly happy and uh, appreciate all of you coming out today on a beautiful day in the middle of the week or near the end of the week to uh, join us today. And uh, for all of your support and your enthusiasm, uh, just want to say that um, my name is Tom O'Shea. I am the commissioner of the Massachusetts Department of Fish and Game. We are really proud to welcome you all to this uh, Mass Wildlife Field headquarters on Climate Week. As you know, Massachusetts is a leader on climate. And with Governor Healy and Lieutenant Driscoll at the helm, we are positioning ourselves to be a global leader in clean energy and climate innovation. And to achieve this, they have appointed uh, the nation's first climate chief, Melissa Hoffer, and Energy and Environmental Affairs Secretary, Rebecca Tepper, who are also here today. Thank you. And I have said this before, and I'm really grateful to have the opportunity to say it again, but I am proud to be working with such a strong and passionate team as we have here with the Healy Driscoll administration to address the climate crisis. Our efforts are broad and diverse, and we're ensuring that buildings like these here are fully electric and free of fossil fuels. And this Commonwealth building here behind you was the first zero net energy building. Built 10 years ago, it is a LEED Platinum certified building. It offers solar panels, geothermal energy, low flow plumbing, uh, and water bottle dispensers among just being a beautiful place with a trout stream in the middle. And we welcome so many people from the public here, and like you all, all of you today. The Department of Fish and Game, as you probably well know, we are focused on conserving and protecting our natural resources and native species. And this is a really critical moment in time for that mission. The actions that we take now will have serious implications for the future of our environment and the overall well-being of our environment and our communities. The governor's executive orders on plastics and biodiversity are groundbreaking. And the Department of Fish and Game, in particular, is excited to play a leading role in conserving our landscapes and ecosystems as a part of these orders. The targets that we set will provide some of the strongest protections for biodiversity in the country. We will be coordinating with other state agencies, secretariats, and all of our partners to use the best available science and to think differently to create innovative solutions. Today marks really a new beginning of a nature positive future and we look forward to working with all of you on this critically important work. And with that, I am thrilled and honored to introduce Governor Maura Healy, whose leadership has been bold, her optimism has been outstanding in moving these efforts forward. Thank you very much, Governor Healy. Wow. Um, well, thank you so much, Commissioner. Thank you uh, so much for having us out here. We are grateful. Should I? Yeah, I see you. <laughs> I sort of see you. No, that's good. I'm uh, challenged in many ways, but certainly when it comes to height. Um, I had to tell you, I, I don't think that we could not have a better day. The lieutenant governor and I have had a great day. Uh, we started out in eastern Massachusetts and made our way west, uh, which was a really good move. We just returned from the Big E. Among the things we get to celebrate in our great state are things like the Big E um, and celebrating our, our culture and our heritage um, and lots of good things out there. So some of us had the pleasure of a lot of maple syrup infused uh, delights and confections and cotton candy. Um, and then we get to come here. And then we get to come here. And this is something that we have uh, long uh, anticipated with a lot, a lot of genuine joy. It's Climate Week, uh, though for us and this team and this administration, every week is Climate Week. But it is Climate Week. So we wanted to find a special way to celebrate and to advance Massachusetts environmental leadership. And so on behalf of the Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll 
and me. We just want to say thank you for this opportunity. Many thanks to Commissioner O'Shea. We love his leadership. We're excited for him. We are so happy to meet the entire team at the Department of Fish and Game on our way in. The LG and I had a chance to meet many of you. One of the great, um, great things about this job, and I wish more people in our state could have this experience, knowing the men and women who serve and the roles and responsibilities that you have, state employees working hard every day on so many different fronts, biologists, uh, or we, we, I mean the scientists here, those who are out in the field recruiting, uh, those who are out training, um, it, you know, it just is fantastic. And so thank you for the work that you do. You have our uh, total support and admiration, and we appreciate the work that you are going to do leading us forward on implementation of our biodiversity order that we'll talk about here today. To Director Mark Tisa uh, and Mass Wildlife, thank you for welcoming us to this beautiful headquarters. I don't think it gets any better than having 900 acres of incredible state land behind you on this beautiful day that, yes, we dialed up. If only we had those powers. <laughs> um, but also to come through a building that is net zero, that is LEED Platinum, that is a state building, again, an example of how the state, how we can lead the way, and we have to seize those opportunities. Um, I don't know what to, to make of the trout stream. Obviously, I was told it's catch and release. Um, <laughs> there's some big trout in there. It's very exciting. Um, to town manager Christy Williams, everybody here in Westboro, we're joined by our uh, incredibly important legislative delegation. We want to thank Senator Becca Rausch, Representative Carmine, uh, Carmine Gentile, Representative uh, Paul Schmid, uh, and of course, our Representative Kate Donahue. We're in your home today, and it's, uh, it's great to be with all of you. I want to recognize the leaders on our team, um, as noted, but some of them bear, again, special mention. Um, Secretary of Energy and Environmental Affairs, Rebecca Tepper, our nation's first climate chief, Rebecca uh, Melissa Hoffer, our Undersecretary for Environment, Stephanie Cooper, Undersecretary for Environmental Justice, which is a new position, uh, Maria Belen Power, Assistant Secretary for Strategic Initiatives and Agency Coordination, Caroline Higley, our DCR Commissioner, if he made it back from West Springfield. You did? All right, nice. <laughs> it's a good time out there. Uh, Commissioner Brian Arrigo, uh, our DEP Commissioner, Bonnie Heipel, Operational Services Commissioner Gary Lambert, our DPU Commissioner Cecile Frazier, and others. But many thanks to, to you all and your teams for the work you do day in and day out. We also have partners here today, uh, members of boards, commissions, advisory committees who continually work to guide our initiatives and policy, organizations, so many. Uh, here that help manage and care for conservation lands, advocates and experts, researchers and educators, the fishing and hunting organizations, um, all who champion our national and natural. Uh, they are national, but they are natural resources. So today we are taking a big step forward, a step to protect our environment, to improve our state's health and quality of life, and importantly, to advance our climate goals. I announced actions earlier this week when I was in New York, invited to speak at the Clinton Global Initiative, uh, because I wanted the world to know about Massachusetts leadership. And we had folks from around the world there, and I wanted to announce it there um, so that people would know and appreciate what Massachusetts is doing, um, as an example, of course, for others to, to follow. But I wanted to sign those orders here today because it is your leadership that makes all of this possible. Your work, your advocacy, your expertise, your dedication, uh, in some instances, over many, many years. And so when we talk about Massachusetts being a leader, we are talking about truly collective action and leadership rooted in the values and commitments of our state. So let's start with biodiversity. Uh, protecting endangered species is critically important. 
We think of the right whales, for example, an iconic symbol of our state's coastal identity. I want to congratulate our Division of Marine Fisheries on being recognized by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, uh, NOAA. I've never seen it written out like that, but NOAA. Um, <laughs> for your successful, seriously, uh, DMF, thank you so much for your successful work to reduce vessel strikes and other threats to our right whale population. The executive order on biodiversity enables us to continue that kind of work for the more than 400 plants and animals on the Massachusetts endangered species list. And it does much more. It calls on all of us to protect and restore entire, entire habitats that our life um, in, our, in our state really depends on. Uh, the soil that supports our farms, the forests and salt marshes that sequester carbon and protect us from storms, the oceans that provide sustainable seafood, oysters and mussels that help clean our waters, butterflies and bees that pollinate our food, the open spaces that support our health and well-being and happiness and which must be accessible to all communities. Ultimately, biodiversity is about the well-being, the well-being of people, the well-being of communities, and it is critical to our climate goals. So that's why this order very intentionally works to deliver the strongest biodiversity policy in America. It allows us to surpass global standards of protecting 30 percent of land by 2030. It calls on us to develop conservation goals not only for 2030, but for 2040 and for 2050, importantly, along with strategies for meeting those goals. And it includes coastal and marine biodiversity conservation, uh, making us the first on the East Coast to do so. This is a promise. This is a promise not only to protect biodiversity, but to protect the health and well-being of our residents and to protect our identity as a state. Um, and also, it's a down payment on ensuring a thriving future. The second action we take today is one of the most immediate and tangible ways we can make a difference right now, and that's by getting rid of and not using single-use plastics. We know that single-use plastics are among the biggest threats to our environment, um, our climate goals, and public health. They're made from fossil fuels. They produce um, and, and emit greenhouse gases, and as waste, we know the damage they do. Anyone looking around, you can see what turns up in our streams and our waterways um, and the harm they cause to our oceans. They're also an environmental justice issue because the impacts of the industrial facilities that produce these plastics tend to fall heavily on black communities, marginalized people um, across different parts of this country. And State government can and will chart a better path forward. That's what we're doing today with this order. We're ending the purchase of plastic bottles by state agencies and moving to sustainable alternatives effective immediately. We're proud to be the first state to take this step, and we encourage others to follow Massachusetts' lead. Again, I want to thank all of our state teams, our advocates and partners out in the community uh, for all that you have done collectively to put us in a position to lead the nation uh, for all the work you do in continuing to move us forward to a healthy and sustainable future. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to our climate chief, Melissa Hoffer. Well, good afternoon, everybody. This is an incredible moment for our state. So I just would like to start with some applause for everybody who helped make this happen. Today, the governor is going to sign the first state procurement ban on all beverages in single-use plastic. It's the most far-reaching state procurement ban on single-use plastics. And we're going to be signing as well the most ambitious biodiversity targets in the country. So reducing our reliance on fossil fuels right now is the name of the game. It's critically important. We have a very limited time to do it. Plastics are made from fossil fuels. 
every step of the way, the production of fossil fuels, the manufacturing and refining of the plastic that's made into the plastic bottles, and of course, the waste as the bottles are left largely in the environment, a small amount of them ending up in landfills or incinerators. So it's incredibly important for us to be reducing all the ways that we rely on fossil fuels and reducing our reliance on single-use plastic is one of the chief things that we can do at this time. It's a win-win-win for climate, for our environment, and also for environmental justice communities. And I really would like to recognize a few people, and that is Gary Lambert, who is sitting here. Gary, if you would just stand up briefly. This is the Assistant Secretary of Operations and Services at our Operational Services Division within Administration and Finance. This executive order would not have happened without Gary. And I'd also like to recognize my colleague, Matt Connolly, if you just stand for a second. Matt is a senior policy analyst in the Office of Climate Innovation and Resilience who helped with this. So these, these executive orders would not have happened um, without Gary and Matt and also our, our colleague Anna Speigel who is general counsel for OSD. So huge thanks to them. And turning now to our biodiversity executive order, I just want to begin with a shout out to everybody here at DFG. You guys are rock stars. So if you're from DFG, will you just raise your hand for a second? Thank you. I want to thank in particular Commissioner O'Shea, who was an early partner on this effort from the get-go, came in thinking about it, wanting to know how we could move it forward. Director Mark Tisa, Jen Sula, Eve Schluter, and the whole DFG team who worked in crafting this nation-leading executive order. Thanks as well to Undersecretary Cooper, who is here with us today, and my beloved colleague, Secretary Tepper, for their leadership and their support for this along the way. So I was down in New York City on Sunday for the climate march. I've been to many, many climate marches. And I don't know if, if any of you were there on Sunday, but there was a really palpable difference in the feeling of this particular march. There was a lot of concern, and you could tell the immediacy and the urgency following on the events of this summer has changed the tone of the climate debate in this country. There was a palpable sense of urgency, and there was also a palpable sense of the awareness and the interconnection between climate, environmental justice, and biodiversity. And you could see this in everything, in the chants that people were chanting, in some of the incredible artwork. I happened to follow a group of people that had made this unbelievably beautiful whale with um, the fishes were all made out of plastic trash. Very, very moving, connecting climate and biodiversity. There were a group of scientists there, I'm pretty sure they were from Massachusetts, I'm not positive about this, that made a huge banner with the climate stripes. Does everybody know what those are? The climate stripes are, are color-coded that show the steep rise in global warming over the past few decades. It stretched for nearly a whole city block. And there were many, many young people there. And they are angry. They're angry, they're fearful for their future, and they are also laser focused on rapidly transitioning us away from fossil fuels to protect that future. And I have never seen, I don't know about you, but I have never seen a group of young people, a generation that is that well focused, that well prepared, and that determined. And I'll tell you, we're lucky to have them. They really get it. They care very deeply also about biodiversity. During our kickoff meeting this week for the Governor's Youth Climate Council, I heard high school students from across this state speak movingly about biodiversity, about the animals and the trees and the plants that they love. And it's okay for us all to say that we love these things. That's part of why we do what we do. The Executive Order on Biodiversity Conservation in the Commonwealth is going to achieve the strongest biodiversity protections of any state in this country. The scientific basis for it is undisputed. And we all know that biodiverse ecosystems are also more resilient to the disruptive impacts of climate change that we're already experiencing, and we know those are going to get worse. But the language of this order is pure poetry. If you haven't read it yet, I encourage you to do so, and I'm just going to read a short passage from it. Whereas, 
conserving biodiversity, the variety of all living things and their interactions is essential to preserve and maintain natural systems for the enrichment of health, well-being, and quality of life for Massachusetts residents. It brings to mind for me the words of cultural historian Thomas Berry, and many of you probably know Thomas Berry's writings. Berry spoke of our time as a time of recovering our presence within the Earth community. He wrote in The Dream of the Earth, that when other living species are violated so extensively, the human itself is imperiled. Barry calls forth the qualities needed to be restored. And I'm just going to read to you briefly a passage from The Dream of the Earth. If Earth does grow inhospitable toward human presence, it is primarily because we have lost our sense of courtesy toward the Earth and its inhabitants, our sense of gratitude, our willingness to recognize the sacred character of habitat, our capacity for the awesome, for the numinous quality of every earthly reality. This is your work, protecting biodiversity, and in doing that, helping to right our relationships with the species and ecosystems that are whole and valuable in and of themselves and also necessary for our own human thriving. As the words of this executive order capture so beautifully, the fates of the natural world and humans are one in the same. So here today we celebrate a new era, a nature positive era, as the commissioner said, an era of biotic egalitarianism, carrying out our work in a way that reflects our understanding of that interconnection between humans and the natural world, a way of seeing the natural world that recognizes its gifts, that holds the other species and the natural world in equal regard, and sees us, as our science teaches us, as a part of it. So keep being bold, and with that, it's my great pleasure to introduce my dear friend and colleague, a true leader, EEA Secretary Rebecca Tepper. It's pretty hard to follow Melissa Hoffer. <laughs> that was beautiful, Melissa. And you know, we are so lucky to have the first climate chief in the United States. Really, really excited. Um, you know, I just I just wanted to point out that. We are at a really unique time in our state, and I think this group really symbolizes what time we are at. And we're at a time when we have the governor, NGOs, universities, all of our agencies in the same place about climate. All of us are dedicated to resolving the climate crisis. And I don't think that there's another state that could say that we have the team that we have here in Massachusetts all working together on this crisis. And it is going to take all of us working together. Um, and to just see you all here today um, on such a beautiful day, it, it gives me a lot of hope. And I know that we all have a lot of hope in this room right now, or in this uh, place right now. Beautiful day. Uh, and we did come from the Big E. Um, I did have this, <laughs> this I never had it before. It's called uh, syrup. What was it called? Maple? Uh, no, cream. Maple cream. It was. It was. It was very good. So there's a lot of sugar going on. <laughs> a lot of sugar from that from the biggie. Um, but you know, I also want to uh, note. I think as others did, what it, what a great team we have here at the uh, Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs. Um, we have a group of terrific commissioners, several of whom are here today, and Tom O'Shea has been a leader uh, on this particular uh, executive order, and uh, he came the very first, I think, I think when we interviewed, um, Tom talked about this, um, talked about having biodiversity goals and how he would like to experiment, see if we could do that here uh, once, uh, if he got the job. And he got the job, and here we are today. Um, thank, you, thank you for your leadership, um, and le we're, le we're lucky to have you. Um, and I also see um, Commissioner uh, Bonnie Heipel from DEP. 
and Commissioner Origo from DCR. I don't know, is that it? That's it. So uh, thank you all, thank you all for your leadership. I feel um, incredibly grateful to be working with you all. And every time I talk to the governor, I say, I think we might have the best team because we have a really good team. <laughs> um, not that competitive or anything. Um, so I, 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 everybody has said a beautiful thing, so I won't say that much more. But I will tell you that um, Commissioner O'Shea and his team, the way this is going to work on the biodiversity uh, executive order, will be conducting a comprehensive review of the existing efforts of all executive department agencies and offices to support biodiversity conservation in the Commonwealth. After that, they'll develop recommendations for biodiversity conservation goals for 2030, 2040, and 2050. These projections will be the strongest in the nation, exceeding the global 30 by 30 goals and among the first to extend coastal and marine habitats. Our oceans, forests, rivers, and streams, and other unique habitat are some of the most important assets for climate action that we have. As species move and adapt to the impacts of climate change, it will be critical that that landscape remains connected. We don't sit in isolation here in Massachusetts from the larger New England landscape. Partners must work collaboratively at local, statewide, regional, and global scale to conserve biodiversity. We're very grateful to have so many of our partners here today who will be critical in supporting this effort. And I think we have one more speaker. Um, please welcome, is it Anthony Fitton is here? Oh, there you are. I was like, where is he? Um, thank you very much from the Nature Conservancy. Thank you. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. Thank you, Governor Healy. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll. Thank you, Secretary Tepper, Chief Hoffer. Thanks, Commissioner O'Shea, and thank you, Under Secretary Cooper. You're all very tough acts to fellow. <laughs> I'm a forest ecologist with the Nature Conservancy. I've met many of you. And many of us on this patio have worked years and decades to conserve the biodiversity of Massachusetts. We all recognize that this is a massive day. This is a huge and exciting day. Our health and well-being, as Chief Hoffer said so beautifully, is intricately tied to biodiversity. Not only ours, but future generations to the health and resilience of our natural world. Biodiversity is essential, from plants and animals to ecosystems, landscapes, seascapes, and watersheds. And yet, our natural systems are under threat. Early in your administration, Governor, you and your team have acknowledged these facts and launched policies and programs, not that nibble around the edges, but that address these topics aggressively, ambitiously, and head on. You've recognized that climate solutions and biodiversity conservation are one and the same. This executive order on biodiversity crystallizes all of that for the Commonwealth. On behalf of the Nature Conservancy, I want to thank you for your leadership. We're grateful, impressed, and proud. And we couldn't be in better hands than those of Commissioner O'Shea and your incredibly dedicated, intelligent, and successful staff leading the way in setting biodiversity goals for the Commonwealth. In addition, Significantly reducing plastics in our environment and their, from their manufacturing to their final disposal will be, a great, will be a game changer. We will not only see tangible benefits, but again, Governor Healy is raising the awareness and creating solutions. We look forward as, at the Nature Conservancy to continuing to collaborate with you, your team, and your partners to implement what you have set in motion today for lasting and tangible benefits. Our forests, rivers, wetlands, coastlines, and oceans are very happy today. Thank you very much. I'd, I'd now like to introduce Michelle Mannion from Mass Audubon. He's up just a little. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Chief Hoffer, Secretary Tepper, Undersecretary Cooper, Commissioner O'Shea, and your teams. Your teams are amazing. I can attest to that. I'm just delighted on behalf of Mass Audubon's 160,000 members and the 40,000 plus acres that we protect for the people and the wildlife of Massachusetts to be here on this really auspicious day, I think. 
I can remember uh, over, I think almost 20 years ago now that Massachusetts led and spearheaded the development of the first ever carbon emission trading program for power plants, leading nine states to a program that is still up and running. It's been one of the most durable climate programs in the world. It's been a model for everyone in the world. And it's still delivering billions of dollars in energy efficiency savings for ratepayers. So I think in 20 years, we're all going to look back and remember this day, the day that we step forward for setting forth a really bold plan on one of the key crises, an existential crisis for our planet and for our people. So I applaud you and your teams. I think, uh, I think this is hard to do. <laughs> I think you know there's some real challenges with how our economy and how our financial system really think about biodiversity and climate. They don't really do that, and we need to figure out a way to really build in to the way that we think about our economy and how we're delivering for our people in how we can protect these critical ecosystems because they are essential to our, our health, our well-being, and um, we know that you know the costs of of sort of Losing additional forests, habitat, ocean, fish, in the short term looks really good, but in the long term, it's going to cost all of us. It, it already is. And so we're just incredibly proud and thank you for doing the hard thing, the bold thing, and the right thing. And we're ready to throw our shoulder in with our partners. Many of them are here with your team to do everything to kind of get this done and make this vision a reality. So thank you. I, I applaud this effort and your team, and I turn it back to the governor. Thank you.